Hello there. As we look back in our lives, there are certain milestones and decisions that we make that seem to alter the course of our lives. I want to share a few of these milestones with you from my Christian walk. However, I want to begin years before I made that personal commitment to follow Jesus. Because really, I believe that the Lord works in our hearts long before we are actually saved and has a plan and a purpose that he's working out in our lives. You see, when I was born in Scotland, it was an icy day in December and I was delivered before the midwife arrived. The ice was actually on the inside of the windows, it was that cold. And when I was born, I actually turned blue and my mother thought I was going to die. My aunt arrived shortly afterwards and they administered the only thing they felt they could in those circumstances and they gave me a tot of whiskey. So it's been sort of a, a thing that's gone throughout life with me that uh, they believe that the whiskey saved my life, but I know otherwise because God had other plans. In Psalm 139, we read these words, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And you know, it was God had made me and he had a plan for me. So my time hadn't come to an end. But the family moved around Scotland, the Shetlands, England and Northern Ireland with my father's work. And even though I was a home bird, I got used to moving and settling in new places. Having moved so much, we became a very close-knit family. And I was one of five siblings and we certainly tried to look after each other, particularly joining new schools and making new friends. I really was very blessed because we had a loving and caring family. As children, we were sent to Sunday school and occasionally attended a family service, but I can't remember ever hearing the gospel in those years. However, I was still aware there was a God. It wasn't until I was 13 and we'd moved to Northern Ireland that I heard the gospel in a way that changed my life. This was another milestone that has continued to shape my, the direction of my life to the present day. As I say, we moved to Northern Ireland during my secondary education and I attended Wallace High School in Lisburn. During the summer holidays, one of my new school friends invited me to their caravan in Port Ballantrae. SISM uh, were holding a seaside mission. We went to that meeting one evening and as they were speaking, my heart was stirred. I heard the gospel for the first time that I can remember and I walked forward at the end of meeting, the meeting to accept Jesus as my saviour. That evening, the volunteers walked, talked and prayed with me. I'd never felt this way. God's love was just washing over me in waves from my head to my foot. And I found myself filled with an overwhelming self, uh, an overwhelming sense, sorry, of love and awe. Jesus was very real to me in those times times and now. No longer a character in a story, but my personal saviour and friend. Although I shared this with friends and family, their reaction didn't mirror my own excitement, but neither did they discourage me. As I didn't have a Bible, I saved up my pocket money for several weeks to buy one. And being the King James Version, it wasn't easy to read or to understand but the words it contained became very precious to me. Although I attended a local church as a young teenager, I floundered somewhat and have no one to turn to for advice or to disciple me. My growth was slow and I made many mistakes. I stumbled along in my Christian walk and I'm sure the Lord shook his head as it got me out of one dilemma and scrape after another. Another milestone occurred some years later when I moved to England and from England, work took me to Wales, Scotland, back to Wales, and then Belgium. Although I continued to seek God, I struggled in my walk. However, our feelings do not always stop God's preparations for his plan in our lives. I think of some of the great men of faith that also struggled in certain areas, just as we do. 
Peter, David, Moses, Joseph, to name a few. At a particular church meeting during this time, God had given me a clear vision to serve him in his garden. This didn't make any sense to me at the time, and whilst working in Belgium and travelling into the surrounding countries, I searched for this place, this garden. There were many milestones during this time, good and bad, but I never forgot the vision that the Lord gave me, and this came to fruition when an advert was placed by the Church of Scotland for missionary service in Jerusalem. The Lord had used the intervening years to give me qualifications and experience to fulfil the job, far more than I would ever have expected uh, previously. Jerusalem was his garden, and with the support of my husband, I applied for the post. Following a rigorous recruitment pr process, six months later, having been offered a three-year contract, we arrived in Jerusalem and felt immediately at home. The words that really spoke to me in this time were from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. And it goes on to command us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You know, these were precious years and the Lord uh, took me obviously to Israel to work there. But it was amazing that during that time of work, God was also preparing me too and teaching me in an amazing way. It was as if my faith suddenly came real and the Bible became a mass of colour, not just black and white, but true. And I was able to visualise so much more and to understand so much more. So God really took me off the fence in these years and showed me his plans and his will. At the end of three years, my contract was up. And although I was offered an extension, I felt that I could not stay with the Church of Scotland as there were so many different things happening within the church that I found hard to accept. So with much prayer and much sadness, because I really loved the position, I loved the people I worked with, both Jew, Gentile, and I just knew that God was closing the door on this time. So sadly, I left Jerusalem and came, went back to Scotland, where we actually moved and had an amazing time up in the highlands of Scotland. But this and a subsequent time in Israel was an amazing time of learning about the culture and the life of Jesus. As I say, it really came alive to me and it gave me opportunities to really understand God's heart for covenant, his feasts, his calendar, and the people from the different communities. This time of service also allowed me to travel to many parts of the country within Israel and we made many friends in all the different communities there. I really believe I accepted the word of God, Genesis to Revelation, during my time in Israel. Because really, uh, as Jim Graham once put it, we hedge hop. We tend to accept what we believe and re refute what we don't understand or can't accept. Genesis to Revelation is God's word. So there was only one answer, and that's what came about in Israel. You know, whilst we think we're working for God, God is in fact working in our lives and bringing change that can help him serve him so much better within the body of the church and within our community. He doesn't give us lessons just for ourselves, but he gives it to share with others. And really, during that time, whilst we moved from Scotland to Ballymoney, uh, the, there were times when the Lord gave us opportunities just to share what he taught us. And we're told always to be ready to give a word in season. And maybe this testimony is part of it. However, I can only share a very small part of all that God has done. You know, like many Christians, life has not always been easy. And my Christian walk is littered with failures and wrong turns. 
But I know I have an amazing Heavenly Father who through Jesus has accepted me as I am. To know that I am forgiven and accepted still amazes me and I've learned to rely on the guidance and correction of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We serve an amazing God, a loving God. As an extremely shy child, I never imagined the journey that God had prepared for me and I do believe there's more to come. After all, there's no retirement in God's kingdom. I want to end with some verses from Psalm 40, which were so important during a period of waiting for a breakthrough. In Psalm 40, verses 1 to 3, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in God. And that's where I am now, just trusting in God and waiting for the next step. Bless you.